Professor Solms asks us to imagine what it would be like to be a body without a mind. But he doesn't ask the opposite question. Supposing you were a pure mind sans body, without eyes, ears, skin, or any sensory data, whatever. Not only would you not sense the physical world, including the people in it, you couldn't even contemplate abstractions like Pythagoras' theorem if you never saw or felt a triangle. There would be no you if there were nothing but you. Often quoted peripatetic school axiom, which is in Descartes' version, there's nothing in the mind that doesn't appear first in the senses. According to this school, at least, the mind and even the non-brain body aren't separable. Does Professor Solms agree, or does he think that pure mind exists in some way? Again, here we, in fact, have um, more than one question. Um, it's, it's a compound question. To, to, to take it um, at, at the one level, uh, do I uh, agree that there can be a mind without a body? And then separately, there's the question, do I agree that there can be no mind without sensory um, representations? Now, from everything I said earlier, uh, you will uh, see that I believe that the answer to the second aspect of the question uh, is uh, uh, yes, I believe there can be a mind without sensory representations. This is the very point I'm making. I think that because we live in our cognitive consciousness, we tend, it's sort of uh, the, the, these mental solids uh, hide everything else from view. And we tend to, uh, because the light shines most brightly uh, in our cognitive consciousness, our representational consciousness, that, that is to say the contents of our mind derive from our external sensory experiential uh, um, uh, world. Uh, we tend to equate that with the mind as a whole. But I, I really think that that's a mistake. And everything I said in response to the earlier questions uh, doesn't need repeating. Um, I will just remind you very briefly about the children with the hydranencephalic children who have uh, no, uh, no, no cortex, um, no external, no capacity to represent consciously um, uh, the, the external sensory world. And yet they are just so obviously mental creatures, feeling creatures, and the emphasis very much is on feeling. So um, uh, the answer again to the second aspect of the question, I believe that there can be a mind without contents derived from experience. In other words, um, the mind is the, 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 the mind is something bigger or there, there are deeper layers to the mind than the sensory experiential one and all the cognitions derived from sensory experience included. Now, as to the first part of the question, can there be a, a disembodied mind? It's not really the same question because um, implicit in my answer to, 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 to implicit uh, to, in, in everything that I've said already uh, is the distinction between these two aspects of the body. We, when we speak of the body in, in cognitive neuroscience, for the most part, what we mean is the external body, the sensory motor body. The body that we can see, uh, the, 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 your body as I perceive it with my eyes, your body as I feel it with my hands, um, that's the external body. That's also the body in which the aspect of the body in which the external sensory modalities, the organs that represent the state of the outside world, um, are on the external surface of our bodies. Uh, there's uh, receptors in our skin, uh, the retina in our eyes, ears, smell, taste, etc. These are all surface organs. But there is another aspect to the body, which is what I call the internal body, the, the visceral body, the autonomic body, the vegetative body, if you will, the sort of jellyfish within you, um, the internal milieu, the, 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 the vital economy of the body. And uh, this aspect of the body is not represented mentally in in uh, sensory motor form, in images, in, 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 in uh, representations derived ultimately from maps uh, of, of the external surface of the body. This aspect of the body is represented, to put it in, in, in its simplest uh, form, this part of the body is represented by feelings. So it is your, your body uh, uh, that's representing, that, that, is, that is generating 
it is the it is the the reception of information about your body which is generating this second aspect this other aspect of the mind which is feeling and feeling as it happens is really the bedrock of consciousness it's what all consciousness uh, uh, ultimately depends upon um, if this aspect of the mind is absent uh, then there is no mind as far as i'm concerned i think that is that is the that is the um as i'm going to go in the second week uh, 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 of of um uh, no in fact in the third week um, of of these lessons uh, i'm going to speak of subjectivity and then speak of consciousness the capacity for consciousness and when i do that i'm going to go into all of this uh, material um, in much greater depth so hopefully it will become clearer to you what i mean then but if i can just say for now uh, the, uh, as I've already said in, in, to, in my answers to these questions today, the, the brain represents the state of the body, but importantly, it represents the state of two aspects of the body in two different ways. The external body is represented in terms of sensory information and, and the memories derived from them and the thoughts derived from that. Uh, uh, but the, the, the internal body is represented as feelings, and feelings are the point of consciousness. And this is a more basic, more primitive aspect of the mind on which the external representational component rests. Um, that, because that aspect of the mind is so fundamental to everything else that we mean by mind, uh, and because that aspect of the mind uh, has to do with the monitoring and representing in affective consciousness the presence and the state of a living body, um, I, can't, I can't conceive of how such a thing um, can exist um, without the body that drives it, without the body um, wh which it is about. Um, the, the mind is about the state of the body. So in a nutshell, I, I don't think we can speak of a disembodied mind. The mind is about the body. Your mind is about your body. Uh, the, the, the complication is that it represents these two different aspects of your body in two different ways, and therefore we tend to conflate our talking about the body in relation to the mind, we tend to conflate it with the external body, the sensory motor body, and that's not only, uh, not only is that not the whole story, that is in fact the less important part of the story. So, um, apologies for these complicated answers. Um, the, uh, Einstein famously said, in science, it's important to make things as simple as possible, but not simpler than that. And uh, that, the, the, that uh, adage certainly applies today. We can't make these matters simpler um, than they are. And uh, the matter of the mind is, is not a simple matter. But if you bear with me as we go through these weeks together, so I hope that the, 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 we will begin to see the wood for the trees. That is the whole point of this uh, series uh, of lessons, uh, uh, trying to address the question, what is a mind? Thanks very much for sending in your questions. I, 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 as you can see, I find them fascinating. I find them important. And um, I've enjoyed um, at least attempting to answer them. Thanks very much. Till next week.